So happy new year and welcome back back to this channel and today I want to do a video about Deborah in the Bible. So I remember some weeks ago so through um, the studies of so basically there's a study called the Sabbath school lesson and daily we have like a study guide that we go through and then on the Sabbath at church in the morning we all discuss it and last quarter there was a topic on Ezra and Nehemiah and then one day um, we looked at the judges of Israel. So one of the judges of Israel was Deborah. So I ended up reading judges and that what really stood out to me was that Deborah was a woman of encouragement and I really love the Bible and everything because you know this is a chapter I've read before but that's the thing with the Bible is that we will never get to a place where we're like you know everything in it we understand it everything in it you know there's no need for us to study because even in heaven we're going to be studying and that's what I love about the Bible is that every time you read it God you know through the Holy Spirit shows us you know something new something that we need to really see uh, for that time and for me when I looked at it it was like wow Deborah was such an encouraging woman woman and at that time I said Lord help me to be an encouraging woman because we see just by her encouragement you know she was able to they were able to you know because they didn't she didn't fight alone they were able to go to the battle and actually be conqueror so we just see the power of influence as well and the power of you know obeying god's work will so i just want to begin this you know study of seeing how we can be women of god women of righteousness by taking out some of the characteristics that really stood out to me so the top characteristic that really stood out to me was that Deborah was an encourager but we do see other characteristics of Deborah so before that before I read some of the chapters you know I've got my Bible here some of the chapters uh, some of the verses some of the verses in the book of Judges let us just pray and invite the Holy Spirit because you know we see in the Bible it says and when he is come he will guide and lead us into all truth and that he is spoken of the Holy Spirit so let us pray Dear Father, I thank you so much for your word. Thank you for gathering us here together. Thank you because you've given us uh, given us your word as a standard and by your word we can be cleansed from all unrighteousness so as we study your word give us clarity give us strength and help us to understand the things that you want us to hear in Jesus name I pray amen so to begin let us read Judges chapter 4 verses 4 to 16 and um, so yeah so through here I'm just going to read it once throughout and pick out the things that really stood out to me and yeah so that is Judges chapter 4 verses 4 to 16. So in verse 4 we see Deborah's role it says Deborah was a prophetess wife and she judged Israel at that time so it says here and Deborah a prophetess the wife of Lippadath she judged Israel at that time and she dwelt under the palm tree of Deborah between Raham and Bethel in Mount Ephraim and the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. So we see here that Deborah is a woman of discernment. It said here that the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. So this means that Deborah was a woman that had spiritual discernment. And for us to have spiritual discernment, you know, we need to be in God's word and we need to be praying even as well setting aside time for fasting and praying that doesn't mean you may have to entirely you know give up food it may be just eating very simply getting off social media getting off things that distract you and things like that so we see that Deborah here was able to discern between good and evil because if someone has spiritual discernment they are able to discern between good and evil and the people trusted her you know because they went to her for judgment so that is a first characteristic we see she was a woman of discernment and now Judges chapter 4 verse 6 and said she sent and called Barak the son of Apinoah out of Kishba Naphtali and said unto him have not the Lord God of Israel commanded saying go and draw towards Mount Teba and take thee ten thousand men of the children of Naphtali of the children of Zebulon and I will draw unto 
the to the river of Kishon, Syria, the captains of Jabin's army with the chariots of his multitude, and I will deliver him into thy hand. So we see in verse six and seven, what I love about this is because Deborah is a woman that holds people against God's word. So we see that Deborah here is a woman of accountability. She calls Barak the son of Abinoam. She calls him and says, you know, hasn't the Lord God of Israel commanded you to do this and that? So we see that she knows what God has told them to do. And she's keeping him accountable because this brother here, he doesn't seem to have, you know, gone ahead with it. So she's reminded him. And this reminds me of the importance of us being our brother's keeper. So we see with Deborah, she was her brother's keeper. She wasn't like, you know, Cain that basically says, you know, am I my brother's keeper? She was actually a brother's keeper because she accounted, she kept him accountable through the word of God. And we need to be encouraging one another to the standard of God's word and not to let anyone fall short. And you know, that is something that God has to help us all with to, you know, be able to stand firm and be like, didn't God say this and really stand firm with the word of God. So even though we see that Deborah was a judge, Deborah was um, a woman of spiritual discernment. We also see she's someone who held people with the word of God. So we see that she's definitely a woman that loves uh, God and, and study God's word. Next, it says in verse eight, and it says, and Barak said unto her, if thou will go with me, then I will go. But if thou will not go with me, then I will not go. And then she says, and and she said, I will surely go with thee, notwithstanding the journey that thou takest shall not be for thine honour. For the Lord shall sell Sisera into thy hand of a woman. And Deborah rose and went with Barak to Kishtar. It says, And Barak called Zebulon and Nephtali to Kishtar. And they went up with ten thousand men at its feet. And Deborah went with him. So I'll stop there. So in verse 8 to 10, we see that Barak says, you know, Deborah's given him the message of, you know, God has said this to you, but now he's saying, I will go only if you go with me. If you don't go with me, I will not go. So Barak is not as confident to go alone. So he needs Deborah's accomp uh, accompanying him. So um, with that, we see that Deborah is definitely someone to be trusted because he knows that she can, he can trust Deborah and to actually go um, have her accompany him. So we see then in verse 9, Deborah is faithful. She knows that God has said something and she's now faithful in actually saying, yes, I will go with you, Barak. So we see in um, accordance to Deborah, a characteristic is that she is someone who is basically willing to follow God's will. And it really reminds me of Isaiah chapter 6 verse 3 which says here are my Lord send me and I believe that this is a very important characteristic of a woman of God willing to go where God wants us to go and I also add to that as well as single women that you know have more flexibility we need to be going where God sends us to go whether God whether it's a mission trip whether God is telling you to move locations that you may be a blessing there we need to have that flexibility and we need to have that openness with God because God can use us wherever we go. So now I'm going to read verse 14, um, skipping it a bit. So it says, And Deborah said unto Barak, Up oh, for this day in which the Lord has delivered Sisera into thy hands, is not the Lord gone out before thee? So Barak went down from the Mount Tobar and 10,000 men after him. And the Lord is comforted Sisera and all his chariots and the host with the edge of the sword before Barak. So Sisera, Sisera, lifted down his chariot and fled away on his feet. But Barak pursued after the chariots and after the host. And Hasariah said, of the Gentiles and of the host of Sisera fell upon the edge of the sword and there was not a man left. Wow. So we see in verse 14, Deborah says unto Barak, you know, up for this day in which the Lord has delivered 
Sisera into thy hands is not the Lord gone out before thee so again she's encouraging has not the Lord gone before thee the Lord is basically God has said this it's going to happen let's just go that is the type of woman she was and for me I just see that encouraging because it just shows that Deborah had trust in God she had trust in the words of God and by God's grace we see in verse um 15 and 16 because they hearken to the sound of the voice they were able to go ahead you know and follow the way of the Lord what such a blessing to see God's will being fulfilled by just being faithful and also I just want to read another verse and that is in the next chapter so Judges chapter 5 verse 7 and we are going to see another characteristic so we see Deborah is a mother in Israel. I'm not sure she had actual children, literal children, but we see here that she's defined as a mother of Israel. It says, the inhabitants of the village ceased and they ceased in Israel until that I, Deborah, arose, that I arose a mother in Israel. So we see that again, to be a mother of Israel, again, from what I said before, you need to be your brother's keeper. So if people are around, you're basically caring for the flock, like a mother cares for a child this is how uh, Deborah was so she cared for the children of Israel because it could have said you know mother uh, Deborah was a mother in in her household but she was a mother amongst you know in Israel so in a nation so that's such a blessing so we also see from being a mother of Israel you are definitely going to be a woman who has hospitality, a woman who is hospitable, a woman who is friendly, a woman who is kind and loving. And people just like to be around you if you are a mother of Israel. So just to summarize, uh, going back to the previous verse in the characteristics we saw of Deborah. So Deborah, yeah, so Deborah, so Deborah was a a woman of judgment so she was a woman that had spiritual discernment she could discern between good and evil and for us to discern between good and evil that means we are in prayer we're really knowing God's will and we're really studying God's word because this word the word of God is a lamp onto our feet and a light onto our path so given this gift she had the gift of discernment but also we know uh, discernment is strengthened by studying God's word having that communication with God and then we see that in verse 6 as it says you know she called Barak and says you know have not the Lord God of Israel commanded saying so Deborah was her brother's keeper she kept people accountable you know according to the word of God so this is such a blessing because today in modern history we are so scared sometimes to hold people accountable we just want to be liked and that means sometimes we're just basically not holding people accountable according to God's word so let us be encouraged the same way Deborah was holding people accountable to God's word let us use God's word as a standard God's word has said so let us comply to God's word so she was her brother's keeper then we see again Deborah was someone who was willing she said and and she said I will surely go with thee notwithstanding the journey and then the verse goes on so Deborah was a woman that that was you know like Ruth in the Bible I will go where, where you go you know she was willing to go um even though it can seem like, wow, this is a battle. Are we going to be defeated? You know, is, is, is this God's will? You know, so much panic can happen. But Deborah was a woman who was confident. She was a woman that didn't fear. You know, the Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 for God has not given us the spirit of fear but of power love and of sound mind she had love and definitely a sound mind because she didn't have fear because she was going the way of God there was a battle in front of her but she said I will go with you so we also see from that that Deborah was a woman of encouragement she went to the ways of God and she went to the ways of righteousness and this shows as well that by her influence she was able to influence people in a positive manner so we also see with that that um, going on again she tells the people you know God has delivered you is not the Lord's hand before you so again she keeps people reminded that God will deliver them God has said and God has spoken and then lastly in Judges chapter 5 verse 7 we see that um, Deborah was a mother of it in Israel so she was hospitable 
friendly kind loving you know as a mother is described a godly mother so it is my prayer that as we have looked at these characteristics of deborah that we would surely follow these principles so to end this you know let us pray and if you have any more characteristics that you believe you know has been mentioned you know in the book of judges about Deborah please leave it below so that we can learn from one another and we can really strive to be women of God because we see in society many things are happening but for us to really know what a true woman of God is we have to see the, what is written in the scriptures so let us pray. Dear Father, I thank you so much for these characteristics, spiritual discernment, encouragement, being our brother's keeper, being a woman that feareth the Lord, being a woman who is loving, kind and hospitable. Help us, O oh God, to have these characteristics. Show us how we can spread to others the gospel through these characteristics and help us to be like Deborah that says, I am willing to go. Here am I, O oh Lord, send us to be able to share your word and to also be a light to those in dark places. Thank you, O oh God. Give us strength now and help us to be women of righteousness. In Jesus' name, amen. So have a blessed day. Shalom and may God be with you.